This is the chuck from the Atlas TH54 lathe that I am working on right now, and uh, I'm just re I'm just uh, reassembling it after taking it apart and working on it. Uh, all I really did was I took a file to all the nicks and burrs that were all over it, and here I am hammering in the uh, crown gear, and uh, I'm just using the back of that screwdriver because it has a urethane grip on it and makes it very soft. I rub a um, lubricant over all the contact surfaces and uh, I'm just using 3-in-1 oil because it's convenient and uh, easy to use. Um, and it lasts quite a while so uh, just going to use that for now. Uh, here the crown gear moves very smoothly which is a big change from how it was moving before. Here's the back plate of the chuck and the key that turns the crown. Uh, make sure that's lubricated and fits well and the hole is cleaned out. Turn it, turn it around so that I can see that key piece. Uh, Got to give it a little bit of a twist. There you go. Everything seats perfectly. It was very hard to take it apart, um, but after cleaning it, it was much easier to put it together. I didn't bother to clean the heads of these these screws. Um, they they were okay. They were in good shape. Uh, they were a little bit rusty, but it was fine. Nothing. It's just uh, surface rust and no pitting or anything like that. So I just left them as was as they were. I did wash them. Did clean them very well. All the oil and garbage that was on them, I, I brushed off with a stainless steel brush, but I didn't put. A, the wire wheel to them and really shine them up. You can see that I went in a uh, cross pattern to tighten everything down and that's just so that everything's nice and even. Now here's looking at the top of the chuck. <clears throat> the numbers um, are the numbers of the chuck and the Made in USA symbol actually showed up pretty well. Uh, there's a little bit of damage to the face of the chuck but nothing that's unexpected. Each one of the pieces, each one of those slots, has a number beside it, and uh, the corresponding jaw has to be put in that number first. Uh, you turn the scroll, which is the, you can see those little lines inside of there, on the back side of the crown gear is a, what is called a scroll, and uh, that helps a lot. So that's just a quarter inch drive uh, socket driver. It's just on a long handle it was easy to use. So I set these so that you can see the numbers of these. There you go. And uh, each one goes into the slot as it's numbered. And you can see it's seat into place and then I can turn it into the next one. And when I see the scroll begin, I take the second one. Focus, damn it, there you go. And uh, take the next one and push into place. Seated, I turn it go to the next one and here's the third one which focused right off the bat which was really weird and I can see it a little three-in-one oil on the scrolls makes everything move a little bit easier um, the spot where the chuck key goes in actually needs to be replaced or somehow maybe I'll weld a, a lug in there uh, I don't really know how I'm going to solve that problem. It's a pretty big problem. Uh, I thought about cutting the uh, cutting it off at the gear and either brazing or welding a uh, another uh, the end of a socket in place, but I don't know how well that would work. And excuse me, my coffee has just not made it to me yet. <clears throat> So you tighten all the jaws up all the way to make sure that they meet in the middle and they do meet very well. So I'm going to call this a success. Lubricate the scrolls again, and then I'm going to run them about halfway out. Um, this rebuild was pretty good. I took a file to all the burrs. I lapped the face. I lapped the edges and sides of the jaws. And then I took a wire wheel to anything that uh, had any extra rust that I didn't want on there. Uh, 
Uh, the whole thing has been will be sprayed with a little bit of WD-40 before I install it on the lathe. But if you watch my Instagram, you'll get to see it installed.